location for Supercar Saturday. Floyd, where are we? We're at the casino at Daniel Point here for Supercar Saturday. I just want to say thank everybody for working with us. We've been having issues because of a few people that don't want to act right, but just want to make an announcement right now. You guys be the first to know we're moving to the uh, Hard Rock Seminole, Hard Rock Casino, May. That's going to be our new home, so May of next month is going to be the new Supercar Saturday location, the uh, Seminole Hard Rock Casino. So just want to let you guys know, stay tuned. We've got a lot of stuff coming up in May. You're hosting an event, right, for Formula One? Yeah, we May 7th, we're doing a, a viewing party for Formula One at the Daniel Point, over at Daniel Point. So that'll be another event that we're doing. So, I mean, we got that coming up. We got uh, we got a rally to Barry Jackson next weekend. So Barry Jackson next Saturday. We're doing a rally up there, a safety car rally. Like I say, May 7th, we're doing a Formula One Miami viewing party. So, yeah, we have a lot going on. Yeah, it'll be a good month. Good start to the summer. Cool. Max Verstappen's Formula One press car from Red Bull. Now, if you're wondering what all of these Formula One cars are doing behind me, here in Daniel Point, we are just a few miles away from the Hard Rock Casino where they will be hosting the Formula One Miami Grand Prix the first weekend in May. We're gonna hope to try and make it over there, but seeing these cars in person is honestly astonishing. I mean, from the absolute insane carbon fiber suspensions, the aerodynamics of the car, even just physically seeing how small the cockpit of this car is. Honestly, for me, the cars are a lot bigger in person than I expected watching them on my TV all these years, but it's, it's pretty incredible and we're excited for our second year here at the Miami Grand Prix. middle of some amazing pieces of Formula One history. Now, right here, we have a retired Formula One car, and although it has a lot of differences in design from our newer generations, it has one really noticeable design that you'll see here. You have the open cockpit styling that was so popular in Formula One through the ages. Now, if you come over here to this press car, now this isn't a real one. This is a Red Bull Racing Formula One press car that you see for the Formula One Grand Prix coming down here to Miami. The most noticeable difference that you'll see is this halo feature right here, a safety fix feature that was introduced in 2018 and has so far saved several drivers. Now you'll see a lot of crashes throughout history that could have benefited from the addition of this halo. It was pretty controversial when it was introduced in 2018 until we started seeing some crazy crashes like a car that came up onto another car dropping the tire right down on top of the driver's head and the halo saved his life. So as you can see, the, the cars have remained relatively the same shape, design, suspension wise, front lips and aerodynamics, but you can see they become more and more refined each and every year that the cars have been designed, making them better, faster and harder to drive. Ford Heritage car. This is the second generation Ford GT. This is a 2020 low mileage edition. It's not a carbon series, but it does have the carbon package on it. And perhaps more interestingly, this car is going to be auctioned off with no reserve at the 2023 Palm Beach Barry Jackson auction, April 13th through the 15th here in Palm Beach, Florida. shortage of supercars here at Supercar Saturdays, and that includes McLarens. Behind me is a McLaren 570S.
lovers being here in Miami, we have just as much fun on the water as we do on the pavement. And behind me is a jet car. When you don't want to leave your supercar behind in the garage and you want to park it in your boat garage, this jet car is a two-seater. They vary in speed and body style to fit the aesthetics of several different types of supercars. And they even come complete with a dashboard, center console, and Momo racing steering wheel. years we've really seen a strong emergence and popularization of resto mods which is taking classic American cars and turning them into more modern pieces of art. Now that can include updating the headlights, taillights, adding air conditioner, updated suspension, even changing out the engine to something that's not vehicle correct. But behind me is a completely original Dodge Charger. Now the only thing about this car that isn't period correct here is the wheels. But if you check out the interior, the dashboard and the exterior of this car, it may have been restored or else it's in beautiful condition, but otherwise completely original and period correct. Have you ever wondered why the Michelin man, the tire guy, is white? Take a look at the Chevy 1300 behind me and you'll see the white tires that we came to know and love from so many classic cars. Now, if you didn't know this, rubber, once it's processed, is actually this white color, but it lacks a lot of chemical rigidity. And along the way, tire companies added this carbon, which made it black and gave it some chemical rigidity and some more stability in the tire. Speaking of resto mods, the truck behind me has some of the most obvious but well done resto modifications to the car. So one thing that you'll notice here, the grill has been completely blacked out, which is uncommon for these pickup trucks. But you'll also notice the LED style ring around the headlights. Now that isn't the only thing that's been done to this truck. There have been some updates to the interior, but besides that, come check out the tailgate because this truck has something I've never seen done before. The tailgate has some really fun little features. The first one being that the handle here is actually a powder coated wrench. It looks like it may be a 10 millimeter. So if you're missing your 10 millimeter uh, wrench, this is probably where it went. Another thing is the tailgates on these trucks usually have a chain on the side. This one actually has an internalized cable. And you'll notice here, the Chevrolet cutout is actually see-through Lexan. Killing the game today. type of vehicle modification that we see to classic cars is called the patina. Now from a distance, it may look like this car hasn't been taken care of, but this is actually beautifully done patina to show the actual age of the vehicle. Now, every bit of this car has been hand painted and hand touched to give it this aged appearance, but it is completely clear coated and I guarantee there is not a speck of rust anywhere on this car. Now, besides that, you can see that it is pretty low to the ground. This has a what we call bags. This has an airlift system that allows it to lift up while you're driving and back down uh, to different heights. 
and on top of this has a completely custom to die for interior now it's got the custom diamond stitching in here the beautiful brown to match the robin's egg blue of it the white dashboard and if you come around the back you'll see a completely redone wooden deck This is my uh, grandfather's 1950 Chevy pickup um, that I restored over the past couple years uh, when he got sick and I uh, wanted to give him his dream that he never got to make happen before he passed away. So and it was nice to surprise him with it when it was all said and done. rebuild supercars. I currently own nine cars. I own a Lotus Savora, a K-12 Lotus Elise, an NA Lotus Elise, a Dodge Viper with a cam. I've got a Lamborghini Gallardo. I've got a Porsche Cayenne. I've got an off-road Porsche Cayenne. You blew like, me out of the water. Uh, BMW i8. I feel like I'm missing something. <laughs> oh, a Lotus Exige. That's all nine. Perfect. And what do you do for a living? Is it interviewing? Anything else? I do this. I'm a YouTube channel host for Man TF Up Garage. I work for a collector car auction and uh, I just do social media. It's a lot of fun getting out in the community and meeting other collector car enthusiasts. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you. And you want to tell us what you do? What? So I actually do social media as well for Tint World, which is a automotive franchise. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah, I'm yeah. really familiar with Tint World. Yeah, so uh, we started a YouTube channel called Tint World TV to kind of show more of the lifestyle and the events and stuff like that. Very so, cool. Yeah, that's what I kind of do. I don't have a car because I live in New York City, so you blew me out of the water with that Oh my one. God, I would not have a car in New York City. I was watching <laughs> no. a video of people in like, I think they were in Chicago and not a single one of those bumpers wasn't fucked up. But if anyone has a wrecked supercar in New York City, like <laughs> hit me up on social media, I'll buy it. I, I love it. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Decades ago, Porsche released one of the most iconic supercars of all time, the Porsche 959. Since then, we've seen the GT2, GT3, and GT4 RSs, but behind me is perhaps the next most iconic car in the lineup, the Porsche Carrera GT. Now, this, this is one of just a few hundred of these cars ever built, and of course, you know, you gotta get the hate from the Fast and Furious car, but remember, at the end of the day, this is one of the most iconic supercars. Now, something that I personally think is really weird about this car, if you come and take a look at the interior, the placement of the interior is very not Porsche-like. Of course, you have the dashboard, which has the iconic Porsche gauge clusters, the steering wheel. But when it comes down to the actual internal system of the car, it's more like a McLaren in the way it separates the cockpit and makes it super driver-focused. Besides that, take a look at where the gear shift is. If you come around back here to the engine, you can see just how much of a monster this car actually is. Now you can even see a lot of the suspension components in here to help absorb the shock of this car. Now this is a street legal race car in every sense of the word. This engine creates so much power, gets so incredibly hot. You can see actually all of the ventilation, the entire rear hatch of this car stock from the factory is these huge open vents for air intake. The design of the back end of the car is designed to bring as much air into the engine compartment as possible and then push it out, the hot air out through this vent here over the iconic Carrera GT. Guys, this event was insane for the first and last event we're having here. How do you guys feel about it? Like you said, it was insane. I appreciate everybody for coming out. But look for us next month at the Seminole Hard Rock Casino. 
on the second Saturday of every month. So, again, appreciate everybody for coming out. If you guys don't know, this is my partner, John, right here. Now, a lot of you guys don't know who this is. It's the man behind all the madness. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. See you guys there. Supercar brand. Can I pick two? No. Ferrari. Ferrari, what would be your second one? Um, you can't say Lamborghini, that's like, treacherous. That's like at the bottom. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. It's either McLaren or Porsche. Okay, okay, I'll take that one. Thank you. Thank you. I could have guessed Ferrari. Can I ask you guys a quick question? Sure. What's the best supercar brand? For me, I like the Lamborghini. Lamborghini? Yeah, same. Lamborghini. We gotta put a tally up here. Lamborghini versus Ferrari. I'm a Lamborghini person. So thank you guys. Can I ask you guys a quick question? What is the best supercar brand? Uh, Ferrari. Ferrari. Lambo. Lamborghini. More Lamborghini. Thank you guys. What's the best supercar brand? I'm gonna go with McLaren. McLaren. That's the first McLaren today. I'm going McLaren.